All right, welcome back. And so I know I've been doing a lot of coin videos lately and more to come on that front. But in the meantime, I thought I would uh, inject a little sports card related content into my channel. And this is gonna be a top 25 football card countdown. So we're in the midst of the NFL preseason, um, opening day, opening kickoff is, is soon. And I did do this video once before, I think maybe three years ago, I forget. But anyhow, there are some different cards here this time around. So start off with this Tom Brady, one of my favorite Tom Brady cards. Uh, this is from 2002 Bowman's Best. And I think it's just a nice looking card. It's not, it's not refractor or anything special, although it looks like it's got something going on in that regard. But anyway, 2002 Bowman's Best Tom Brady. And then another Tom Brady. I have a few Brady's in this top 25. This is the uh, Topps Chrome weekly wrap-up version, card number 150. And I bought this paired with the base card 100 um, one summer, probably about six, seven years ago, together as a group. And I think I paid like 250 bucks for both of them. And this was a, definitely one of those COVID-crazy cards about four years ago. Um, Number 23 is Tony Dorsett, rookie, PSA 8.5. All-time great Cowboys running back. Here's a card that I believe is valued less than when I bought it pre-COVID. I think this was like around a $300 card. Um, and I don't think I quite have it at that in this particular countdown. Maybe I do, but yes. Yeah, this is one of the few cards that uh, actually is worth less, I think, than, than when I originally purchased it a good year or two before the, the big COVID run-up. Kenny Stabler rookie card, 1973 tops, the snake. Card number 21. Not the best looking rookie card for anybody. It's Lawrence Taylor from 82 Tops just sitting there on the bench thinking. Probably one of the worst football cards ever is from this very same set as Joe Montana on the on the, on the sideline telephone. <laughs> it's just, I don't know, it's kind of silly. Just a nine Marino rookie. A few years ago, I went in a run with four sharp corners, and I bought a bunch of nines and tens for of guys from the 80s, football and baseball. This was one of them, as was this one. These two are really close together. This is probably worth a little bit more. Um, I do recall paying about $255 for this card in a nine. And um, today's price is maybe worth a little bit more than that on paper. John Elway rookie card. Peyton Manning, upper deck, rookie, card number one. I guess I preferred this image over the tops base card image for this one. And I'm into this one for about a buck and a quarter. So I guess this brings us to number 16. It's a really nice Joe Namath from 1969 tops. Hard to tell how off-centered this might be if anything i think certainly top to bottom it might be a little bit short down here but a lot of them that i've looked at kind of have that same sort of uh distance between the text and the bottom of the border but anyway it's a sharp looking card of namath from 68 69 tops i should say ungraded but really cool this quad materials from 2016 National Treasures, Emmett Smith, Walter Payton, Barry Sanders, and Curtis Martin. I think when I talked about this card before, I was interested in this, this card, but instead of Martin, I like the Dickerson version, Eric Dickerson, but I just couldn't find one that was, uh, you know, I guess that made economic sense. Uh, very expensive, uh, the ones that were available, so uh, this one was much more palatable from a price standpoint. National Treasures. And coming at number 14 is another 
triple, this is a triple patch card actually, uh, from Panini Flawless, featuring Peyton Manning, Tom Brady, and Brett Favre. And this one is numbered out of 25, number seven out of 25. Is this one numbered? I don't know, I think it is. Uh, out of, this also, yeah, this one's also out of 25. So, numbered out of 25. And I'm going to leave this in the original um, mag holder here. It looks like it came this way from the factory. And then I can't think of any compelling reason why I'd want to open this up and send it in for grading. Because these cards, I think, are tough to get high grades on because they're just, they're so thick and maybe more prone to damage on the edges and the corners. And honestly, I don't know how much value would really add to this as a result. So, Jerry Rice. Probably should have waited when I purchased this. I believe it's valued at maybe a little more than half of what I shelled out to get this card. Uh, nines were exponentially more expensive and still not cheap by any means. I want to say they probably are pushing close to $2,000 still. I think at the time, nines were three range. Um, but certainly a nice card. The all-time greatest wide receiver, Jerry Rice. Number 12 is the other Tom Brady card from 2002 Topps Chrome. This was a big card during COVID. I want to say it's got as high as around 5,000 bucks. Um, now, I believe you can have this one for under a grand. And this is his first Topps Chrome card, base card. Just a nice card overall. And so I purchased these two as a set. Um, maybe around 2017, maybe 2018. And it was probably like 200 something dollars at the time. So pretty good, pretty good deal back then. Um, probably should have sold it and rebought it. But I can say that about a lot of the cards I have. Um, here's one that's really hard to comp because there's very low pop on this. Terry Bradshaw from 72. 8.5. I see a lot of eights. I see very few nines. And um, man, I bought this a long time ago for like a hundred and fifty dollars. Probably around the same time I bought those Brady's. You know, I go on these little runs of specific sports or genres or what have you, and I just like rattle off a bunch of purchases. And this might have been included in that that period of time. Um, second year card. Terry Bradshaw. All right, now we're into the top 10. And at number 10, I got Walter Payton. Classic rookie card here. Real nice. Centering is not bad, considering. Um, maybe a little off top and bottom. But a nice card nonetheless. Number nine. This uh, 2016 Panini National Treasures dual autograph of Barry Sanders and Emmett Smith. Hard to get comps on this. I'm the comp on this one. Um, <laughs> I think this one is, I have this at $1,100. Number to six out of 10. Just a great looking card. Great running backs. Number eight is Dwayne The Rock Johnson, 1994 Bumblebee Tuna. These perforated cards like this, or like the SI for kids, I don't know how they come to their grading um, with regard to these sort of perforations. And sometimes an eight looks like a six, looks like a 10, looks like a, they all look the same to me is what I'm saying. So I don't know what the differentiating, fa differentiating factors are when grading a card with the perforated edges, but I think eight's a solid grade for this card, kind of unique. And this was a really big card during COVID. Um, I think when I bought it, it was, I paid a fraction of what it peaked at. Uh, maybe like 25, 30% of its all time high. Dwayne The Rock Johnson. Number seven, another Tom Brady card. One of his very few cards from 2001. He might have maybe three total cards from this particular year. Uh, the Upper Deck Rookie Effects. And I remember exactly what I paid for this 275 this Tom Brady card. Number six will be the Johnny Unitas. 
Uh, not unlike the Rice, probably bought a little too soon. In fact, those two cars probably were purchased near one another. Um, but this one's centered well enough. Anyway, there might be a little bit. If you want to scrutinize this, you probably see a little bit of a tilt. Um, and maybe this has less white border than the right side, but just a sharp looking card. Johnny Unitas. Number five, the classic Joe Montana rookie card from 1981 Tops. Not much more I could say about that. Now here's a card I might be a little bit too optimistic on regarding how it's valued, but it's one of those cards where you can't look at VCP for the four and then use that as the price for this because this is somewhat of a unicorn for this particular issue, known to have a lot of surface problems, uh, poor registration on the face, centering. And um, as far as I can tell, this is as good as it would get centering-wise. It might not be quite 50-50, Maybe left and right, maybe 55, 45. But it has a nice, clean, deep black surface. The face isn't fuzzy. Um, so yeah, tough to find. And again, it's one of those cards where uh, the eye, eye appeal, as I like to say, transcends the technical grade assigned to it. Because I looked at fours that have sold. They look nothing like this. Um, so again, maybe I'm a little too optimistic as far as its placement is concerned within this this top 25 countdown, but I don't know. Jim Brown rookie card from 1958 tops. Brings us to number three. One of the few cards that typically I'll overpay for cards and then they go down in value after I do that. So it's like, you know, I get, <laughs> that's kind of like my, uh, my MO, but this is one card where actually I did really well on. Um, I feel like I underpaid for this at the time. And um, this Bart Star is notoriously difficult to find centered. And again, if you want to scrutinize this one, maybe there's a little bit less white on the left edge than there is on the white, on the right. Um, but I don't know. I mean, just as far as I'm concerned, this is as good as it's going to get. From a centering standpoint, it's a six. I paid $1,300 for this card um, a couple years ago. And um, I think if I were to sell it today, I think I would get decent amount more for it um so the bart star and the last two cards gonna be tom brady pre-covid purchase here and some of these you're gonna see in an, a, a video again probably in the next month or so um we'll get into that in a minute but this is the upper deck rookie and i bought this from a guy in canada for like 800 bucks and this would have been early 2020, I think. And this went up to around about seven, eight thousand dollars, I think. And then I think now it's like around twenty five hundred. So it's come back quite a bit. And honestly, the sweatpants, this is a very uh, familiar image. You see the same image on a lot of his cards from this era. Um, but it's the upper deck star rookie. The star rookie does have some significance in general. So that's why I went for that one. And then lastly is the uh, Bowman Chrome. And I think it was maybe about a month or so, maybe December of 16, whenever it was uh, the Super Bowl that he beat the Falcons, it was, I bought it prior to that. Like, so that would have been December, was that 2017? So it was a while ago and it was $899. And my gosh, this was definitely one of those nutso cards during COVID boom. It went to like $25,000. I mean, it's just ridiculous. I mean, geez, you're, you're never going to see that again for this. Um, now it's well under 10. Um, it's still a nice card. I think maybe arguably his nicest rookie card, the Bowman Chrome. Um, but yeah, so there you have it. Currently the, the top 25 football cards in my collection. And when I mentioned that, you're gonna see maybe these four, these last four are gonna show up. We're gonna do a sort of a Clash of the Titans <laughs> uh, card showdown in the next month or so over on Baseball Collector's Channel. It's gonna feature myself, Joe, Silver Jackify, uh, Josh, Rated Rookie, and then of course, Mike, Baseball Collector. So I think the goal is to do top 50 
but we're gonna spread it out over five videos, 10 cards at a time, because that's 40 cards a video. So uh, we don't want it to get too long. I figure that's pretty good, pretty good pacing. I'm not sure when that first one's gonna roll out, you know, cards number 50 to 41, but I'm sure the guys will be talking about it. And, um, you know, I'd say maybe within a month or so, we'll do that first one. So um, anyway, as always, thanks for watching. I will talk to you later.